In this video, we'll be implementing the Taylor series in Python. The Taylor series is the approximation method to approximate a function to a polynomial, all right? I won't go into too much depth as to what the Taylor series is, all right? This video is more about the code implementation, but we'll take a brief look at it anyway. I have my website open here, and we have some information here about it. This here is the function. It's a basic uh, series, what the series looks like, okay? Alternatively, you can take a look at this other function I have here, another way of representing the Taylor series, okay? So this might make more sense to you. Okay, just take a look at it. This is the function, all right? And that's x, okay, a is, um, well, a is a point, okay? Let's not go into that too much, but let me just talk about what the Taylor series is briefly and how it's used, okay? So assume here that, that this is a function that we're trying to approximate. Okay, this is actually the graph for e to the power x. Okay, so this here is a function and we want to make the Taylor series for it. Okay, so what we do is that we make a series of points. Okay, and the more points we have in that series, the more accurate our approximation of that function becomes. So for example, this red line you see here, this red straight line, this is what the approximation looks like when we have just two points, okay? If we add one more point, then we get this. And you can see it's beginning to resemble the graph for e to the power x. And if we add in one more point, we end up with this. So you can see that it's looking fairly close to what it is. The more points you keep adding, the more accurate it's gonna become, okay? And don't look into too much as to why we want to make the Taylor series for a function. Typically, it's because we just want a representation for it, okay? We want to be able to have a series representation for it. You can look that up more, and we have some more info on the website as well. You can read through this later on, okay? If you want to, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. You can read up on that. So at any rate, let's just go back to our code, and let's begin coding, okay? So we'll be using the SymPy library in Python. SymPy is a Python library used for scientific computation and it gives us useful features such as differentiation, which is what we'll be using in today's video, because obviously we're not gonna make our own differentiation function because it makes more sense just to use one from an existing Python library. So that's what I have SymPy here for. If you wanna learn more about SymPy and how to use it to differentiate, integrate, and use limits, matrices, and so on, you can check out my SymPy tutorial series. It'll be linked to it in the description below. There's a lot of great content in there. All right, so let's begin. I'm actually gonna be using more than just one or two SymPy functions, all right? So pay attention, it's not gonna be that hard to follow, don't worry. I'm just gonna import the factorial function here because I'll need it. You may have noticed it in the formula. And I'll also import exponent because I want to try and approximate the exponent function. I'm gonna create this symbol x over here. And what this means, what this represents is the unknown variable x. SymPy gives us a way to actually represent such an unknown, which we can't do normally, okay? So we can use this x normally in equations now. I'm gonna create a function and it's gonna be exponent. I'm gonna use exp to represent uh, the exponent and I'll pass an x into it and we're gonna be representing this, okay? That's our function that we're gonna be creating the Taylor series based off on, okay? And we have n for number of iterations sorry, number of points, well, same thing. The number of uh, points that we'll be adding to our Taylor series is 10, okay? So we'll add 10 points in total, okay? Uh, if you add too many, it's gonna be hard to check the output, okay? So it's best if you stay with 10. And um, what else is there? Um, there's the value of x zero, we'll just keep it at zero. And result can be, um, normally we might initialize this to null or something, but I'm gonna, for simplicity, I'm going to make it the first term in the series, all right? So the first term in the series is actually just gonna be uh, func dot subs, subs for substitute, because we're substituting the value of what? X, and what are we substituting it with? We're substituting it with X zero, okay? So that's how this SymPy function works. We're substituting the value X with X zero, and what's the value of X zero? In this case, it's a zero, okay? So that's what the initial value looks like. If I take you back to the site over here, you can see that this is the first term inside our series, okay? So that's what we're trying to represent right now, okay? And the rest of them will begin calculating them in this loop over here, 
okay? And this is gonna repeat n times, all right? So we're, we're gonna be adding uh, nine points in total because we've already added one. So I'll make this begin from one instead of zero, okay? So in total, this loop is gonna add nine new points to our series. So, so let's take one last look at the formula, okay? And then I'll begin coding it. So n over here, this fn over here represents the number of times we're derivating it. So f1 uh, would mean that it's being differentiated once. f2 would mean it's being differentiated twice and so on. All right, just take a good look at this and I'll begin coding this in one go, hopefully. All right, so let's go. I'm gonna use the diff function to differentiate. The first parameter is the function, okay? that we're gonna be differentiating. The second parameter is the symbol with which respect to we're gonna be differentiating, which is x. The third parameter is the number of times we're gonna be differentiating it, okay? Normally I would leave this blank, but uh, since the default, default value is one, but I'm gonna specify this, this time as i, okay? So in the first iteration, it's gonna differentiate once. In the second iteration, it'll differentiate twice and so on. The answer to this gets added in the result, all right? And what else? Uh, we're differentiating it, okay? And let me just take another look. And then we're multiplying it by x minus x naught, okay? And then this is being powered by i, okay? And am I missing anything? Okay, this is gonna be now divided by factorial of i, all right? So, let me see, I'm gonna use the pretty print function, okay, to print out our result, otherwise it's gonna look pretty terrible. Pretty print will show the numerators and denominators properly. Okay, so if I do this, and if I execute our code, uh, hopefully it should run properly. Great, I'm actually surprised that it worked on the first go, but it's working. We can see here that we just represented the Taylor series, okay, for e to the power x, great. And that's really amazing. We have our answer right here. But wait, something seems off. The E shouldn't be there. Let me take an another look at this. Okay, wait, we didn't substitute the value back into the differentiated function. That's the mistake we're making here. Substitute, and I'll substitute this back in here, x zero, and this should give us our correct answer. And what's that? Um, okay. Run this now, and this should give us the correct answer now. Otherwise, it was, it was pretty much the same thing. Uh, it was close. Okay, this is our correct answer. All right, that's our Taylor series. And you can try this out on the other functions. It's gonna work, all right? So, yeah. One last concept to touch base on in Taylor series is how to find the error, okay? You've made an approximation, but you want to know how much is it diverging from the original equation? How accurate is our answer? So there's a way of checking that, and let me show you. It's gonna be error is equal to, and over here I'm going to do, um, in the brackets, we'll do func dot subs, we'll substitute into the original function a value. Okay, let's just leave this, uh, let's just call it a value for now. I'll come back to this in a minute. And I subtract from this the result, okay, the result expression that we have, all right, and I'm gonna substitute the same values in there. And then we divide this, okay? Uh, let's just move that outside the brackets. I'm gonna divide this by the original function and the value will substitute inside of it, okay? But what is this value, okay? Now, we can't measure error across the entire graph. What we can only do is measure error on a certain point. Okay, so for example, we can measure the error at x is equal to three or measure the error at x is equal to four or five. Okay, so we can measure the error at different points in the graph. Okay, but there isn't really a way, at least not that I know of, to measure the error across the entire graph. Because logically speaking, the entire graph is probably gonna be infinite, right? Especially in the case of e to the power x. So that's just something to consider. So let's try and find the error around the point um, x is equal to three, all right? So this is going to give us uh, the error and we'll print that out, 
all right, every iteration, just to see how the error changes as we iterate. Okay, because this is actually going to be rather interesting to see because the error is going to slowly decrease, all right, as you'll see in a minute. Um, all right, that's weird. Did I do something wrong? I think the only problem here is that we need to convert this to float. Okay, this is a common problem that we face in SymPy. It attempts to give us a very accurate value, but that's not re really readable to us. It's more useful if you want to do scientific computation and you want an ex a very accurate answer, okay? You, you don't want to look at it yourself. You just want to pass it on to another equation or to another function that's gonna be using that value. So in that case, I would not recommend doing this. Otherwise, just for you know visual purposes, just so we can see the error in a more readable format, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Let's run the code now and hopefully it should be in a more readable format. All right, there we go. You can see that the value is 0 0.8 and 0 0.57, then 0 0.35, then 0 0.08 and 0 0.035. Then eventually it becomes really small down here. And if I increase the number of iterations even further to, to like 20, you'll see that the error slowly decreases and decreases. And it's pretty much negligible around this point, honestly. It's like 10 to the power minus 11 something. So yeah, that's basically zero. So if we increase this to like 100 or 200, it would basically be at zero error. Okay, so that's just, I'm showing you how the number of points you add, the number of iterations, how it affects the error and the accuracy of our approximated Taylor series. Okay, so that was the point of this video. Hopefully you guys learned something new today and you enjoyed the video, I hope. If you wanna see more content like this in the future, make sure to subscribe because we have a lot more content that is coming out, uh, not just Senpai, other very important and cool Python libraries as well, all right? So yeah, see you guys in a later video.